Um, last November, even The Guardian uh, reported on Slovenia, but not about how a good tourist destination it is, but with the headline, Slovenia adds water to constitution as a fundamental right for all. Uh, and this is why I was invited to this uh, panel to talk about uh, how we managed to achieve this, uh, um, this amendment. Uh, as in many countries uh, in the EU, also Slovenia uh, reacted strongly on the uh, announced uh, directive proposal by the uh, European Parliament and the Council about the concession contracts on how they could be uh, how, how, how they could uh, allow for uh, giving concessions for water supply. And uh, then a civil initiative arose, like in many other European countries, which was, of course, strongly against uh, this uh, directive proposal and which demanded one very simple thing, that water uh, should and must become um, a, basically a human right. Uh, so, in the following years, in 2014, this uh, civil initiative uh, managed to persuade uh, uh, some political groups in the, in the parliament and uh, a motion was uh, brought into the National Assembly of Slovenia but was, didn't come to a conclusion because of the early end of the government. But it was revived in uh, 2015, uh, last year. Uh, and was uh, pu pushed forward by the former Prime Minister Elenka Bratusek and co-signed by uh, my political group, the United Left, and also two coalition ruling parties, the Social Democrats and the uh, Democratic Pensioners Party, leaving out the ruling, the biggest, uh, bi biggest uh, coalition party, the party of the modern center, because they uh, had to think about the constitutional views of such uh, a move. Um, but why uh, did we decide to put uh, forward this motion and to try to uh, amend our constitution? So the utmost, the, 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 top, uh, the top document, the top act in the, in the country. Um, I should say that uh, the legislature in uh, Slovenia was already fair, fair enough about this, this matter. Uh, but the fact remains that uh, laws can be simply changed by a simple ma majority in the parliament. So there is no guarantee that one day one government would come and say, okay, let's privatize everything, let's give concessions, and let's change the laws. And the only reasonable solution at that moment uh, was to find uh, a way to make water a constitutional matter, and this is what uh, we try to do. Uh, and I would like to stress out the whys. Why, why is this so important and I, why I think um, this step, the making water a constitution, constitutional matter, is probably one of the best ways to secure the right uh, of citizens to water. Um, first, I, was, uh, I wanted to point out on some, uh, on some uh, cases which were uh, which clearly show what, what it means to privatize water uh, or give water uh, concessions for water supply in other European countries. We've heard before uh, some of them. The first and most prominent probably it was in Italy when in the beginning of the 90s uh, there was a uh, rearrangement of water supply companies into joint stock companies which were then privatized. And the outcome was, uh, I have a statistic here, between 1997 and 2006, the uh, increase of water price was of 60%. And on the other side, as it's usual with privatiz privatization, uh, investments uh, into the infrastructure decreased by 70%. It's, of course, following the basic logic to minimize, uh, uh, minimize costs and increase profit. Uh, Next was, of course, Greece, with uh, Thessaloniki and Athens, where also Suez played uh, an important part. And again, 300% increase in prices for water, and uh, also uh, water quality dropped to an almost uh, health risk level, as I was informed 
uh, or almost. <laughs> uh, and well, the quality of water was reduced, and this in was Thessaloniki. yeah okay in Thessaloniki. Thank you. Uh, so this is also one of the effects of uh, water privatization. We are facing uh, the very uh, almost sure probability that uh, water quality will fall. And uh, the same story w went on in Paris, where also Suez and Veolia had an important part, where, again, the increase of uh, water prices was 200 percent and so on. But in, at least in Italy and, it, and in Paris, uh, also governments and municipalities uh, saw what, they, the, what, what they've done. Um, Italy overcame this, uh, this problem with, uh, with a referendum, which basically said that uh, it, water was a constitutional matter. And uh, the Paris, uh, Paris municipality decided to bring back in, uh, in, in its own hands uh, water supply because of, uh, they saw what they've done. And again, we have a lot of other um, examples like Portugal and in Barcelona, but also in Bulgaria or in Bolivia and so on. These are all stories which talk about or speak about uh, what privatization of water supply means. So it's a story of destruction, and this is why we came to the point uh, that we should also look uh, what this means for our country, so in Slovenia. Uh, we didn't have so bad a situation. As I mentioned before, uh, there was some privatization, but mainly for, um, the, for the uh, drinking industry which uh, has been given a lot of concessions. But uh, there are three main things I uh, wish to point out in view of uh, our country or our country's problem. Uh, the first was the incoming uh, new generation of free trade agreements. All of these uh, new free trade agreements uh, announced and uh, threatened to, uh, uh, to endanger our water supplies. Almost in every one of them, starting from CETA, uh, wants to uh, wants to have uh, wants to allow the multinational corporations to have access to uh, not just uh, water supply as such, but uh, 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 of water resources, which is a basic natural uh, good. Uh, the second. Uh, the second thing was that uh, we already started to see some problems of the uh, private uh, uh, supply of water. We did not privatize water supply, but we gave concessions to some private uh, companies, and uh, we, have seen, we have seen basically same, the, same, uh, um, the same figures as in the countries I mentioned before. In uh, Kamnik, for example, there was a 200 percent increase of water prices. Uh, in Kershko of 130 percent, uh, in Ormos of 190 percent, and so on. And on the other side, uh, all of these companies who, uh, uh, who were handling this water supply, of course, uh, were paying out uh, dividends with big sums, and also their uh, CEOs or uh, their, uh, their managers uh, were fairly uh, had fairly good wages. Uh, for example, in Kamnik, the uh, manager had uh, a monthly salary which was uh, a third bigger than the uh, president, uh, president of the Republic. Uh, in Kershko, it was uh, two times bigger than the president of the Republic, and so on. So these are three examples uh, of what means the privatization of water supply. It's very simple. Every capitalist logic uh, brings to one conclusion. The minimization of uh, uh, costs, so investments in infrastructure and so on, and the maximization of profit. And this is the basic formula, and it applies to everything, even to water supply. Um, the third thing which I already mentioned was the uh, concessions for the drink, uh, drinking industry. Uh, in Slovenia, they were mainly uh, given in 2005, it was the time of a right-wing government uh, for a, a period of 30 years. Uh, also, in the last years, we uh, privatized most of our drinking industry, the biggest companies who had these concessions. So now private uh, foreign companies have 
uh, these concessions for, um, for at least uh, 30 years or for the next um, 20 years now. And uh, this uh, brings up to about 60% of all uh, Slovenian water which is used for, uh, for, uh, for the drinking industry. And uh, when I think about this, I always think about how in the summers, uh, uh, mostly also in uh, my region where I come from, uh, we sometimes, if it's, really, uh, if it's really hot and there is a water shortage, we always get uh, uh, instructed how to uh, rationalize the, co the consumption of water, but I never heard such uh, a warning for the drinking industry. Nobody says, okay, stop doing uh, your drinks because we are endangering uh, our water supplies. And this is also one of the points which uh, uh, leads to a very practical conclusion, and this is that uh, uh, water should have a, spe a special place in our uh, society and uh, a special meaning. And this meaning is uh, uh, what I said before, that water is a human right. Uh, to finish, I uh, wanted just to... Uh, uh, tell you what we, what we did, what we inscribed into our uh, constitution. Uh, the first, uh, which is, I call it, the postulate of this, of this mission was uh, that everyone has the right to potable water. With this uh, simple and short statement, we said, okay, this, this is what the human right is. Everyone should be able to come to uh, water which is drinkable, which you can uh, drink and use freely. Um, and, uh, but this, of course, is not enough. Uh, we had uh, uh, to strongly convince uh, our, our biggest uh, party, the ruling party, uh, that we, sh we should uh, incorporate into our constitution also some other, uh, uh, some other uh, means to, uh, to, uh, to ensure that water will be a human right and uh, the first was that, of course, water must be available universally. So the state now that we have inscribed this into our constitution will have to provide by such means or others uh, water supply to everyone. If we talk about human rights, I think this is the main task uh, any government or any state should do for its citizens and for its uh, 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 residents. And uh, the second thing was that uh, we should think about how to exclude any threat of uh, privatization or uh, giving concessions. So we had to uh, continue this um, definition, this constitutional definition, and we ended up with, uh, uh, with two, two, uh, two statements which, uh, which are also very simple, but I think that uh, come to the conclusion that is uh, important. And this is that water resources represent a public good uh, that is managed by the state. So no, 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 no one than, than the state can use or manage the uh, water resources. This is important. This is, what, this is the clause that uh, excludes any, um, any uh, giving of concessions. And then on water resources are primary and durably used to supply citizens with potable water and households with water, and in this sense are not a market commodity. Thus, giving priority to the people, not to the drinking industry. If there will, need, will not be enough water, the drinking industry will stop. Water is primarily used for drinking and the use in household. And saying that it's not a market commodity, I think it's a fairly strong message. Uh, of course, there were so, some concerns uh, on how this impacts on uh, free market, how uh, the outside will, will look at us, how maybe someone should try to uh, sue our country for not letting uh, f uh, the principle of the free market and so on. But, uh, I think it's a risk worth taking. It's a risk uh, that is, I, I will call it minor. Um, the outcome was that uh, the amendment passed with a, uh, 
of course, constitutional majority of 64 uh, MPs out of 90. Only the right-wing uh, uh, parties did not, uh, did not vote because they said we already have uh, water, uh, we have already the right to water in, uh, in the Constitution through other articles, but I think this is a strong message. Uh, we managed to uh, bring together our, our group, which is socialist and uh, left, to the social democrats and also the liberals and we can almost say uh, center-right ruling party to come together to this conclusion that, okay, we in Slovenia have a lot of water, but it's not uh, forever, it's not uh, uh, inextinguishable, uh, so we should try to do something with it. And we came up with this solution, so put it in the Constitution and, uh, and uh, make it secured this way. Of course, this is just the first step. It's the um, founding stone of this, of this solution because now, of course, we have to uh, adapt all the uh, legislature and uh, uh, all the laws to, this, uh, to the Constitution and, of course, try to um, implement all this, uh, all this, um, um, all, all that is being granted by this, by this amendment. And, uh, of course, the, the concessions which have been uh, uh, provided uh, for now, they have to, uh, to, to, to end, but uh, we should try to, uh, uh, to find a good solution in our laws on how to uh, at least try to, uh, to, to calm them down, to, to, to restrain them and to find uh, a way to, to to rescue these water resources. Uh, of course, the main part of the job is in front of us. It's uh, what we have still to do, but uh, I think this was an important step and uh, maybe um, an example of a good practice which could be followed uh, also through the initiative in other countries. Thank you.